Now the thing that's most important is feeding the brain properly, giving it what it needs. So proper feeding of the brain is very important. Meet Dr. Russell Blaylock, a top neurosurgeon with over 40 years of experience studying the human brain from the inside out. Known for exposing the silent dangers of neuroinflammation and excitotoxicity, he has written groundbreaking books such as Excitotoxins, The Taste That Kills, Natural Strategies for Cancer Patients, Health and Nutrition Secrets as well as the most recent publication, The Liver Cure, Natural Solutions for Fatty Liver, Inflammation, Obesity, Leaky Gut. Today, he continues to challenge conventional thinking by teaching how nutrition and lifestyle can help prevent and slow chronic disease. He continues to educate the public on how to naturally prevent and slow the progression of chronic disease. In this video, we'll first explore what the brain really is, which nutrients it absolutely needs, and how to get those nutrients from food, before revealing the single worst foods for brain health. Let's begin by understanding the brain through the insights of Dr. Russell Blaylock, a top neurosurgeon. One of the things that we used to think was that the brain never changed. But what they've learned is that the processes connected to those cells change constantly. New synapses, new dendritic connections, new pathways are being developed in the brain constantly. They're destroyed and repaired, and they increase their complexity. And one of the startling things we found is the brain becomes much more complex the older we get. We call this the wisdom of the aged. But wisdom is based scientifically on this complexity where all these connections grow, even into the age of 100 years. And they did a study on 100-year-olds and found that this change in the brain is continuous even then. We call this change plasticity. In order for the brain to be able to become more complex and maintain its function, it has to be fed properly. It has to have adequate rest. And it has to avoid certain toxins. Now the thing that's most important is feeding the brain properly, giving it what it needs. We know that the brain requires a lot of sugar, what we call glucose, for its function. That is its main fuel. At least 80% of the brain's fuel is glucose. It gets this glucose by metabolizing complex carbohydrates. We also know that the brain requires some very complex molecules in order to function, and that it gets these molecules from our food. Now, if we're not eating a diet, that is consistent with supplying these things that the brain needs, our brain is not going to function properly. This can translate into such things as insomnia, difficulty thinking clearly, having difficulty with our memory, difficulty with our speech. So we see that it can have a profound effect. It can also affect our behavior. We know that violence, depression, uh, many of the obsessive behaviors are all related to diet and what we eat. Dr. Russell Blaylock points to a silent but powerful destroyer of the brain and long-term health, excitotoxicity. If you're eating a diet that contains a lot of excitotoxin additives, like MSG, aspartame, various other food additives that are known to be excitotoxic, it increases this excitotoxic damage to your brain and makes you much more vulnerable to damage by these excitotoxins and free radicals. We also know that even simple short-term exposure to these excitotoxins can produce inflammation and free radical generation in the brain that can last for very long periods of time, even decades. Most American diets contain a lot of these excitotoxin additives. They can appear as hydrolyzed vegetable protein, soy extract, soy isolate proteins, uh, carrageenan. So it's disguised in many, many names and we're consuming tons of this every year. With the modern diet, all of us are exposed to excitotoxins every time we eat out. But before we despair, there's good news. We can reduce excitotoxic damage by supplying the brain with the right vitamins, minerals, and micronutrients that support and protect brain health. One way to reduce excitotoxicity is to increase our intake of particular nutrients and follow a good diet. Now, the nutrients that are known to reduce excitotoxicity include DHA, pyruvate, mixed B vitamins, CoQ10, alpha-lipoic acid, transferulic acid, transresveratrol, and many of the mitochondrial stimulants such as vitamin K. Now, we've also learned that when you do increase the mitochondrial's ability to produce more energy, that reduces excitotoxicity. Uh, what increases the ability of these mitochondria to produce energy includes 
riboflavin 5-phosphate, pyridoxal 5-phosphate, vitamin K, thiamine, nicotinic acid, peruvic acid, L-carnitine, coenzyme Q10, and alpha-lipoic acid. That was an extensive list, but we will highlight five most important nutrients Dr. Blaylock consistently highlights for protecting brain health and overall health. The most mentioned is omega-3. When you consume an omega-3 fatty acid like flaxseed or some of the other omega-3 fatty acids, uh, what we call alpha-linolenic acid, your body converts it into two different fatty acid components, one called EPA and the other DHA. The DHA particularly, it does most of the good things we associate with omega-3 fatty acids, particularly in the brain. DHA makes up 50% of the brain fats. Your brain has 60% polyunsaturated fats in it. Half of those are DHA. Very important for brain function, brain growth, and maintenance of the brain. We know that DHA is a powerful anti-inflammatory, and we said yesterday that most of the degenerative brain diseases are inflammatory diseases. So it's very important that this type of oil significantly reduces inflammation of all organs in the body and all tissues in the body, but particularly the brain. We know that DHA increases serotonin levels in the brain. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter. It's associated with sleep. It's associated with preventing depression. It's a mood elevator. There are very high concentrations of DHA oil in the synapses of the brain. These are the connections between the different cells. And this is what changes all your life. I don't care if you're 75 years old, 80 years old, 90 years old, you're always forming new pathways in your brain. You're always forming new synapses. That's what keeps the brain healthy. It is very dependent on DHA oil. We know that this oil increases acetylcholine levels in the brain, which is a neurotransmitter. It's decreased in Alzheimer's disease, so you want it back to normal levels, and that's what DHA type oils do. The brain requires very high concentrations of DHA oil. A study done of Alzheimer's patients demonstrated that they were two and a half times more likely to have low blood levels of DHA than normal people. And when they looked at the elderly with low DHA levels, they were 67% more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease within 10 years of the study. How much DHA should you have? Generally, anywhere from 400 to 600 milligrams of DHA a day. You can buy DHA in a health food store. It should be kept in the refrigerator. And it usually comes in 200 milligram capsules. But you don't have to rely on supplements. These nutrients are found naturally in real foods. Omega-3s, especially DHA, come from whole, traditional foods, not ultra-processed products. The richest sources are fatty fish such as sardines, salmon, mackerel, and anchovies, staples in many traditional diets. Fish roe and other seafood are particularly rich in DHA, the very fat the brain is built from. Smaller amounts are also found in pasture-raised eggs and grass-fed animal foods. Dr. Blaylock often emphasizes that these natural sources deliver omega-3s in the form the brain can actually use. Next up is magnesium, a critical mineral for both brain function and healthy blood circulation. Magnesium loss. We know that you lose a lot of magnesium as you get older. The American diet is very poor in magnesium. That leaves your heart vulnerable, it leaves your blood vessels vulnerable, and particularly your brain vulnerable. There's extensive literature in the uh, peer-reviewed medical journals on cardiovascular disease that so shows that magnesium deficiency rapidly advances arteriosclerosis, rapidly advances coronary heart disease and stroke. There's also an even more extensive uh, medical literature that shows that when the magnesium level in the brain is low, you have uh, a much greater injury to the brain with strokes, with brain trauma, with any kind of injury to the brain. If the magnesium is low, that injury is greatly, greatly magnified. Fortunately, magnesium is abundant in many traditional, whole foods, yet often missing from modern diets. Rich natural sources include leafy green vegetables like spinach and Swiss chard, nuts and seeds such as pumpkin seeds and almonds, avocados, legumes, and unrefined whole foods. These were everyday staples before heavy food processing stripped minerals from our diets. Dr. Blaylock often points out that maintaining adequate magnesium intake helps calm the nervous system and supports healthy blood flow to the brain. The third key nutrient Dr. Blaylock often highlights is vitamin C. 
Vitamin C, I just want you to know that it's more than an antioxidant. Vitamin C is very important for the brain. It causes the uh, brain to secrete more acetylcholine and dopamine related to memory, dopamine associated with Parkinson's disease. It controls the brain glutamate system so that your brain won't secrete too much glutamate. It regenerates vitamin E. So vitamin C is very important for the brain. Vitamin C is abundant in whole, plant-based foods that are naturally high in antioxidant capacity. Many of the richest sources are foods traditionally rated high on the auric scale, which reflects their ability to neutralize oxidative stress. These include berries such as blueberries, strawberries, and blackberries, along with citrus fruits, kiwi, bell peppers, broccoli, and leafy greens. Dr. Blaylock often points out that vitamin C works best when it comes from these whole foods, where it is naturally paired with flavonoids and other protective compounds that enhance its benefit to the brain. Vitamin E, the tocopherols, we'll talk about a little bit more in detail, but it's a very powerful antioxidant. But it exists mainly in the, the fatty parts of the cell. It protects all the fatty parts of your cell. It protects the cholesterol from oxidation. It is well demonstrated that only two forms of vitamin E prevent cancer and, and prevent cancer from growing. That is the natural form of vitamin E found in plants and a form called vitamin E succinate, which is the most powerful form of vitamin E. Succinate is a normal component in the body. So vitamin E succinate is the most powerful antioxidant form and it is the most powerful cancer inhibiting form of vitamin E. Vitamin E is naturally found in whole foods that protect the brain's delicate fat-based cell membranes. Rich sources include nuts and seeds such as almonds, sunflower seeds, and hazelnuts, along with avocados, olive oil, and leafy green vegetables. These were everyday staples in traditional diets, long before industrial processing stripped fats of their protective antioxidants. Dr. Blaylock often emphasizes that vitamin E works best when it comes from real foods, where it naturally complements other antioxidants like vitamin C. The fifth most mentioned by Dr. Blaylock is coenzyme Q10, which works well with alpha-lipoic acid. Coenzyme Q10 is one of the primary energy generators inside that little part of the cell I told you about yesterday, the mitochondrion. It's a very, very important energy molecule. All cells use coenzyme Q10. It also is a very powerful antioxidant and does a lot of other interesting things to protect the brain and the rest of the body. Alpha-lipoic acid is an antioxidant found in all living tissue. It's everywhere in the body, in the plasma, in the uh, extracellular tissue. It's in all of the cells contains alpha-lipoic acid. It is one of the most powerful and versatile antioxidants in the biological system. Very, very important. We've just looked at five essential micronutrients for optimal brain health, all of them readily available in natural, whole foods. In other words, the brain doesn't need anything exotic, just real, unprocessed food eaten with variety. But that raises an important question, is there anything we should be actively avoiding? As we grow older, our brains and our bodies become progressively more inflamed. By the time we reach age 75, that inflammation can become quite significant. Inflammation increases free radical generation in the brain. For instance, at age 75, the number of free radicals being generated is 10 times higher than when we're younger. And the free radicals in our mitochondrion is 15-fold higher than when we're younger. So we see that this can have a profound influence. And as I said, the thing that we know that increases brain inflammation is a high intake of the omega-6 fats. This includes corn oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, peanut oil, soybean oil, and even canola oil. These oils have been shown to not only increase brain inflammation, but increase the risk of such diseases as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Well, the most important way is don't eat processed foods, because what you're seeing in the grocery store is the processed foods that put the high fructose corn syrup in. Eat fresh uh, fruits and vegetables, mainly the organic fruits and vegetables. Even if it's organic, you should wash it with a, a vegetable wash. There's pesticides in the atmosphere that'll contaminate even to some degree, far less than the other. Watch uh, the foods that we know are toxic to the liver, like excess consumption of red meat, things that uh, have high sugar content. 